So I'm going to take you on a quick journey on Maplewood's path to AI adoption. Uh, I'm going to stay positive. There's a lot of uh, hype and there's a lot of uh, kind of catastrophizing about what AI can be. But I'm pretty optimistic about it, and we're going to talk about all the all the positives that uh, that we can leverage with this new technology. Ron teed me up perfectly for this. So um, one thing with AI in the enterprise, I was really optimistic when I saw all the stuff that Ron was showing uh, about ChatGPT and all this stuff. I was like, wow! This, this, about a year ago, I'm like, this is unbelievable. We're going to be able to apply this very easily to the enterprise, and it's going to create incredible value. Um, and that's true to an extent, but it's really actually much more complicated applying AI in the enterprise than you think. So I'm going to take you on that journey and teach you what we're learning and some of the things that we're doing. Ron mentioned NVIDIA. Uh, so there's two companies synonymous with AI in the world today. And one is OpenAI, the creator of ChatGPT, and the other is NVIDIA. So NVIDIA has a 95% market share on CPUs and AI processing, uh, the valuation of NVIDIA skyrocketed from $100 billion in 2019 to $3.3 trillion today. This meteoric rise is because of AI. AI, especially generative AI, the stuff Ron was just showing you, is really hyped right now. In the business landscape, uh, it can be amazing what it can do, but it can also be incredibly challenging, as I mentioned. The amazing thing, though, is that for the first time in history, we have intelligence at scale in our pockets. We have PhD-level knowledge. We have BCG consultants at our disposal 24-7. This has never happened before in human history, and it's here now. So what does that mean for the enterprise? What does that mean for our business? How can we leverage this incredibly powerful technology inside of our companies, inside of senior living? What's the potential for how it will help us create business value? So today, there's three types of companies in the world. There's AI native companies. These are companies that are built on AI from the ground up. And then there's companies that are going to be obsolete if they don't adopt AI. So, the question we have to ask ourselves is, what kind of company do we want to be in the era of AI? Do we believe that there's an opportunity here for us? Do we want to be a taker, a shaper, or a maker? Do we want to be uh, fast forward leaders? Do we want to get out in front and lead? So all of us in this room are in the middle. We're all in the AI emergent category. None of us want to be obsolete, and none of us are built on AI. So what does that look like for us? How do we, especially with the velocity of change, I don't know if you guys track this stuff, but AI is advancing so fast, it's almost impossible to keep track of. So with the amount of velocity and change, how do we maintain optionality as we move forward? How do we talk to our vendors, the technology vendors in, in the uh, room today, Things are happening so fast, we have to maintain the ability to change along with it at that speed. So what does that mean for us? It means we have to get incredibly strategic. So these are uncertain times. I love the, the McKinsey's uh, definition here of strategy. So strategy is a hard to reverse choices that are made in uncertainty that create enterprise value. That's what we're, that's what we're up against today. These are uncertain times. We have to be smart about how we think about how AI is going to impact our business. So a lot of you guys are CEOs in the room. CEOs are really, are really like chief uh, calibration officers, right? So we're, we're constantly having to think about how we shift our business in uncertain times. This is one of those times. So Ron mentioned. Um, OpenAI and ChatGPT, that was a big change for us. When we saw ChatGPT 4 come out, we knew that things were going to change and that we had to figure out a way to, adopt, uh, to adapt to that change as quickly as possible. So in July of 2024, OpenAI came out with this framework. This is their path to what they call AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. This is when 
companies get to the point where AI is so powerful, it's more powerful than humans at doing many different tasks. So right now we're in the, area, the era of conversational AI, and we're quickly moving into the era of reasoning. We're starting to see autonomous agents. We're starting to see agentic AI. Ron mentioned that as well. Um, it, but we're not there yet. So we're at a time where platforms like ChatGPT, platforms like Claude, platforms like Perplexity are able to think and reason and plan ahead, taking vast amounts of information and data and processing it on our behalf. So how quickly will we move from conversational AI to organizational AI? Organizational AI is when AI can essentially run an entire organization for us. How quickly will we get from where we are today to that time? That was one of the things that kind of spawned our interest in, in adopting AI and leaning heavily into it. So when we get to that level, we're going to be at a place called Enterprise AGI, or what I call EGI, which is Enterprise General Intelligence. So enterprise general intelligence is sort of a future construct. It doesn't exist today, but it will exist. And will it exist in three years, five years, or 10 years? We don't know. But the pace is astounding and how quickly we're moving towards this. So this is a future state where businesses can operate highly intelligent digital infrastructure capabilities of autonomous decision-making AIs across the entire enterprise, finance, operations, resident care, IT, we're all moving toward a future where we're going to be working hand in hand with AI agents. We're going to be managers of AI agents. We'll have AI agents on our org charts, and we'll be managing them. I'm actually doing that right now at Maplewood. I'm managing a, a, a small number of AI agents that I've built, which I'll show you. And this is going to be the way of the future. EGI, or Enterprise General Intelligence, what does it look like? These are the, the critical things that need to happen. In the future, we'll have digital twin ecosystem of our entire senior living organization. What does that mean? So digital twin is a virtual replica of our organization. It simulates our processes, our assets, our data, our workflows. And it helps us to monitor those things in real time, builds out scenario planning and it helps us make decisions. So as more interactions and data are fed into that digital twin system, it becomes more accurate and autonomous over time. So this is an incredibly strange future, isn't it? A future where we're going to be literally working side by side with AIs to run and manage our business. However it looks, for Maplewood, the goal was to integrate three things. We want to integrate the humans and human intelligence, all of the smart people who work for us right now. Those people combine human creativity, they combine intuition, they have subject matter expertise, and that's stuff that AIs don't have. AIs will never be human in that way. We want to combine our humans with our business intelligence, we all have business intelligence. We're sitting on mounds and mounds of data right now, gold mines of data. That stuff is sitting in structured data warehouses. It's sitting in Yardi. It's sitting in UKG, right? We want to be able to leverage that data using AI and using the humans. And then we want to wrap artificial intelligence around all of that. Humans working with AI, tapping into the data, and creating this seamless enterprise that works cohesively together. That's the goal. This is all high-level theoretical stuff right now. I can't overstate the importance of data in the enterprise when it comes to AI. AI is not perfect today, but clean data can make it better. Data integrity is really important. So data is like crude oil. So crude oil is useless to us unless we refine it. Once it's refined, it's used to power everything. So what we want to do is take the crude oil that exists in all of our business systems, refine it, and turn it into something powerful that the AI can use. Think of it like turning our data into solar power. So solar power would be even better. It can be clean. It's 
full of energy, and it's infinite. So this is a theoretical framework for what level five organizational equivalent in senior living will look like. I'm not going to go into tons of detail. But as we move into this future, it's important to recognize that in the short run, we're going to be highly collaborative with humans. With, uh, humans are going to be highly collaborative with machines as we move into the next one to three years. But as we advance beyond that, it's important to know that human relationships, the relationships we have with each other, are really the thing that's going to differentiate us in the future. We will be working side by side with machines, and in some cases, machines will be doing some of the work that we do right now. So at Maplewood, we're building our Center for Artificial Intelligence. These are some of the things that we're doing. We're creating a centralized innovation hub. We're basically creating like an R&D lab at Maplewood to figure out how we leverage AI across the enterprise. We've, done, we've been using AI for years, actually, and a lot of you guys have been using it as well, whether you know it or not. Um, one of the things that we have across memory care at Maplewood is AI enabled machine vision systems. These are safety systems that monitor our residents 24 seven. They pick up resident behaviors, they understand if a resident's getting out of bed, they notify us when that's happening, and then we can go in and intervene before something bad happens. This is all AI, machine learning. The machines are learning about our residents and their behavior at night or, or during the day. The results of this are pretty astounding. So 96% of our falls before were unwitnessed. Now we have 100% of our falls are witnessed because of AI. Our median response time to getting into a resident who's, who's having trouble or has fallen is 90 seconds. Industry average is 20 minutes. We all know the story about residents who've fallen. They're in their apartment, bleeding out, have no idea how long they've been on the floor. Those days are over for us because we're using AI to help us solve that problem. This is our LLM toolkit. So we're using ChatGPT, Microsoft Copilot. We're using Claude and Perplexity, my favorite. I love Perplexity. If you don't know what it is, you need to, you need to look it up and start using it. It's an amazing tool. But we're using ChatGPT to do all kinds of wonderful things. We're building job descriptions with it. We're building policies. We're creating training programs. I used Claude, ChatGPT, Perplexity, and Beautiful.ai to do this presentation. It helped me figure out how to provide something to you guys that would be of value and make it really pretty. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know what Notebook LM is, this is just for fun, write it down. And later, go on to Notebook LM. And what you can do is you can create, it's an information distillery. So you put in a website. You put in PDFs, whatever it is. It will distill that down to something really actionable and intelligent for you to, to, to uh, digest. And then you can create a fully professional, uh, fully produced, beautiful, 100% HD audio quality podcast about your content in seconds with two humans interacting with each other about your content. So put your website into it, do it, and listen to the podcast it creates. You'll be astounded at what you hear. It'll give you insights that you didn't even know about your company. So this is a really important tool as well. SmarterX created a GPT, a custom GPT called Jobs GPT. You can enter a job into this, and then it will tell you It'll break down the job into tasks, and it will tell you how much time you can save in that job by using AI in that job. OK, so if, for example, you put in accounts payable associate, right? It breaks down the tasks. You can see the task there, and gives you a percentage estimate of time saved by using AI in that job. So we've done that in different domains within our company. One of the domains is sales and marketing. So in sales and marketing, we're doing content generation, SEO website optimization. We're doing personalization and targeting of, of uh, leads and customers, all using AI right now. We also, using my favorite tool, Perplexity, built out an AI-trained um, sales coach. So this is the sales coach. So what we did is um, Perplexity allows you to right here allows you to uh, search both your own content and the web, or you can do one or the other or both at the same time. 
So you can add content into Perplexity, and it will create a knowledge base for you. So you add all, whatever your sales training content is, whatever it is you want them to know about, put it there, and then they can go in and they can ask questions. Like for example, I'm a new sales associate at Maplewood. What are the top 10 things I need to know to make me successful? And it will answer the question in seconds based on all the training data that's there. It can also just answer questions like, what is the Tides Currents and, uh, you know, what is the Tides program, which is a program that we have at Maplewood for folks with intermediate memory care. And it'll, it'll let the sales agent know exactly what our Tides program is, what's a differentiator for it. This is a, an amazing tool that I'm so excited about. We also built out a policy generator. It's a custom GPT designed to create policies. You put the policy in, or you just say, create a new policy. What do you want to create the policy on? I want to create a policy on uh, personal protective equipment. It uses training data that I put in there, tied to the Connecticut State Regulations, OSHA, and CDC best practices, and it creates a policy based on that in seconds. We're also doing machine learning AI in AP. We've created, a, or we've, we've partnered with a company that has created an AP system that processes our invoices. We process about 2,000 invoices a month. Those now come in through this machine learning system, scans it, understands that the invoice, automatically codes it into Yardi, and it's done. So now our AP accountants don't have to do that manually. Reduces errors and gives our AP accountants more time to do other really more important things. We're doing um, AI-powered FPNA as well. We partnered with a company that's doing this. We're also monitoring all of the AI systems that are coming out within the, the legacy systems we use. So our entire legacy tech stack, which includes Enquire, Yardi, UKG, Microsoft, is embedding AI into these systems. Yardi Virtuoso is coming out soon. Um, UKG Bright is an AI-powered um, HR system within UKG. And of course, Microsoft Copilot. We are um, using Microsoft Copilot to do a lot of different things, to clean up spreadsheets, to um, synthesize long email chains. But I want to, for the tech for the tech partners in the room, just make sure that it's really important that this push to put AI into your legacy stack products is is really um, a challenge because you got to do it right. And I just implore you to partner with the business folks to create AI strategies, technology strategies that work for us. Because just putting a chatbot into a tech platform is not going to help us solve our problem. So a couple of lessons learned. AI is not perfect by any stretch. It's kind of like an enthusiastic, smart intern with intermittent bad judgment. It, it can screw up, and you have to have a human in a loop to make sure that it's doing the right thing. But it's also incredibly intelligent in many ways. And it can be the best thought partner that you've ever had. So it can help you collaborate and solve problems. It can help you strategize. It can augment your own thinking. It can help you expand your aptitude and create and new things that you've never done before. A simple AI framework here is you want to focus on priority domains. We focused on accounting as one of the domains that we could hit really early. It's, it, we, we felt it was low risk, low stakes for some of the things that we wanted to do, like AP processing. And then we implemented it, we're testing it, we're working with our AP team to help us figure out how to make it better. I'm going to skip through this stuff. There's all kinds of ways you can figure out how to integrate AI into your business. This is one of those ways. But in the end, after nearly four decades as a clinician and a healthcare clinical leader, I am now shifting my focus to adopt AI and to scale AI across our enterprise. I don't know where this is going to lead, but I choose to remain optimistic. I'm really hopeful about the future. And I hope you guys are too. Humans and machines working together. And uh, we go off in the force maybe with you, whatever the health thing is. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Brian.